What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to some more tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5C. So in this video, we're back in the lab and we are going to be wrapping up the series of videos that I have done talking about audio performance on the R5C and we're gonna wrap it up with some audio performance testing. Or at least that was the plan. Except as with everything in this series, Canon has thrown yet another curveball in my direction when it came to doing the test. So before I get into this, there is a tiny bit of housekeeping that I need to take care of before we start. First of all, I am not an audio engineer. I did go to school for computer engineering, so I have a reasonable understanding of how to measure electrical signals and make reasonable measurements from them. Uh, but as there is in every field, there are always small nuances and understanding of the way things are done is specific, uh, specific to that field. Uh, since I don't do audio work, I don't build audio circuits when I'm doing electronic stuff. Uh, it's kind of not a field I'm dealing with. There is the potential that I miss some nuance or some specific aspect of that process. Uh, in any event, I tried to make sensible decisions in what I was testing and the methodologies that I went to go about them, but I am going to be talking about all of that as we go on. Second point, Canon, uh, in this video, I'm going to be doing some comparison between the R5 and the R5C when it comes to the audio system on the camera. That means that there are some nuances and differences between the two that you have to be aware of, specifically when it comes to setting manual levels on the two cameras. So on the Canon R5, you have 64 levels that go from zero to 63, with zero being mute and 63 being the highest level setting that the camera can go to. On the R5C, you have 101 levels that are steps that go from zero all the way up to 100. How these exactly map to each other is something of an open question, especially in light of all of the testing I did and may not even actually map to each other all that accurately as a whole. In any event, I made the assumption that the two map onto each other. So basically zero on the R5 would translate to one or zero on the R5C and so on and so forth so that the quarter way through the scale on the R5 would be 15 and quarter of the way through the scale on the R5C would be 24 to 25. I'm not 100% certain that's the case, and based on some of the work or tests that I did with the R5C just in general, uh, the whole thing is really kind of confusing uh, as far as I can tell. Finally, test protocol. Um, specifically, how I got information, what I collected from the camera. So. The idea here is to collect the best data I can from the camera. That requires shooting in either XF, AVC, or RAW. However, we don't care about the video because we're talking about audio. So I ended up shooting all of these tests in 720p XF, AVC. That gave me the camera's full 24-bit LPCM uncompressed audio, which is the best quality audio that you can possibly get out of the camera. Measurements, uh, specifically, I did post or measurements on the audio files in software after the fact. Uh, I used Audacity 3.3.3. So this is open source audio editing and recording software. It's available on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, pretty much everything out there. And I used two functions out of that primarily, which was the measure RMS and plot spectrum. So the first thing I wanted to look at was dynamic range. Dynamic range, of course, is really important to us as photographers in our images and video as videographers in our video across the board, you know, which I mean, any way you cut it, dynamic range is a, a major consideration. And when you get to doing audio, it's also really important to know as well. Now, dynamic range breaks down into two measurements as far as I'm concerned, or, you know, as, as far as I do it, at least. One is to measure the noise floor. The other is to measure the clipping point. Now, normally, if we were talking about digital systems on like the R5 or R5C, then the clipping point would just be zero dBFS. That would be the highest value that you could have in a file. Uh, however, it turns out that in both the R5 and on the R5C, that doesn't quite work and the camera will actually clip or not clip at all or do something that's kind of unexpected at levels below zero dBFS. So that affected the top end in several measurements when I was doing uh, measurements on the R5. On the R5C, well, you'll see in a second, it gets really confusing. 
So we'll start by looking at the noise floor. And to test the noise floor on any audio system, you need to have a load plugged in to simulate a mic, but not actually provide any signal. Now, if you're doing this the fancy way with proper test equipment, you have very high quality, low noise resistors that you plug into the microphone terminal. And these resistors shunt the microphone level to ground and that's how you measure the, essentially the quietest possible signal that the camera could measure. So you're really just measuring the noise in the analog to digital conversion and amplification in the camera. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those resistors. However, the other alternative that you can use in a pinch is to take a microphone that requires power and plug that in to the microphone input as well. So that's what I did. I plugged my Rode VideoMic Pro into the mic input on the R5C and left it turned off. So this provides no signal, but provides the appropriate impedance that the amplifiers are working against the load that they would normally get if there was a signal there. I use this same procedure, by the way, on the R5, so the values here should be relatively comparable, all things considered. So this is a chart of the values or the noise floors that I measured. The red bars are for the R5C, the blue bars are for the R5, the brighter colored bars are with the attenuator off on the you know, internal attenuator in the camera off, the darker colored bars are for the attenuator on. And I'm not gonna go through all of the details here, but you should pretty quickly uh, observe that for the vast majority of cases, the R5C has a appreciably higher noise floor than the R5 does for similar settings. Why is this the case? Um, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I came up with two possible explanations aside from I don't know. One is that it's potentially an artifact of EMI produced by the fan. The short of it is, is that the fan, if the audio system is not properly shielded from the EMI produced potentially by the fan or the fan control system, then the camera is gonna have a higher noise floor. The other possible explanation has to do with what I'm gonna be talking about in a second, which is what I saw when trying to measure the clipping point as opposed to the noise floor. And that is, is that the camera is doing something that's outside of our control. And I don't know if you wanna call it auto gain control. I don't know if you wanna call it, um, you know, a limiter or something to that effect. I'm not exactly sure what the process is, but it's entirely possible that that is also contributing to the higher noise levels because there is less, uh, it's trying to amplify a non-existent signal that it shouldn't be amplifying. So that brings me to the other side of the equation, which is the clipping point, the top end of dynamic range. And the R5, is especially R5C, poses a challenge here. Now on the R5, when I did these tests, I ran into certain situations where the camera clipped below the level meter, uh, before the level meter on the camera reached zero dB FS. So it would clip at like minus three or minus 10 dB. On the R5C, I couldn't make accurate measurements is the best way I could look at it. So I tried the same procedure I did when I was testing the R5. I hooked it up to my Zoom F6. I used the line output level calibration, so it's a one kilohertz test tone, to produce a test tone that I could feed into the camera at various levels to set or reach the clipping point. And I did that, and I got weird results. So I built a attenuator circuit, a 47 and a half decibel that ended up being attenuator circuit to attenuate that down to microphone level. So I could put a full zero dB FS signal out on the F6 and have a mic level signal going into the camera. And I got the same kind of results. And I hooked this all up to an oscilloscope. I made a whole bunch of measurements. I know that the camera uh, or the oscilloscope, like the voltages going into the camera were mic level. So they were about six millivolts RMS, which is right in the middle of the 0.1 or the one to 10 millivolt range that mics typically work at. Uh, and I got really weird results. So what ends up happening or what ended, I ended up happening in my tests is that the camera would clamp the maximum signal level based on whether there was a signal on the thing or on the camera, on the mic, when I took it out of mute and started upping the level settings on the camera. And in fact, with the 
one kilohertz test tone, I couldn't actually get the camera to get to zero dBFS. Now, if I plug a mic in and I boost the levels and I make loud transients or talk really loudly, I could get something that would occasionally hit the clipping point, uh, but only from a transient perspective. I even tried setting the camera up in front of speakers, playing white noise and with a microphone and going through all of that sort of rigmarole, and I still ran into this same non, you know, like differentiating, uh, differential behavior. So here's what I saw. With a one kilohertz test tone being fed into the camera, if I started the test tone before I unmuted the input and started raising the levels, the camera would clamp the signal at minus eight dBFS in the level meter on the camera, and there was nothing I could do to get above that. I could turn up the output on my F6. I could turn the levels all the way up to 100, even though the 30 was high enough for them to clamp or high enough for them to hit this level and nothing would happen. So I recorded a sample of that. I measured it, opened it in Audacity. I measured it. It ended up being minus 10.4 dBFS is what Audacity measured it as. And the waveform for the file was absolutely not clipped. So there was a full waveform there. Now, the second test I did was I ran the camera up to about 30 dB or 30 on the level setting before I applied the test tone. And then I turned the test tone on and the camera immediately jumped to minus two dBFS on the level meter. So that's higher than it was if the test tone was applied before I started measuring things. So, okay, that's interesting. I recorded a sample, I put it in Audacity, I measured it, came back at minus 4.8 dBFS RMS. And again, the waveform here was not clipped at all. So the best that I can come up with is Canon has some kind of uh, limiter or uh, uncontrollable filter going on in the camera that is preventing the camera or the manual levels from maxing out the recording on the camera or maxing out on the camera. So what that ultimately means is that in the case of this video, I don't have dynamic range tests for the R5C because I can't reliably determine what the actual limit is on the camera is because of the way this is working, or at least I can't with my setup. Now, as I said, I'm not an audio engineer. So if you know of a better way to go about testing this, leave it in the comments below and I may be able to go back and reevaluate this. Now, the one positive of this is that the R5C isn't actually clipping. Uh, it's getting pretty loud. The levels go up to, like I said, minus eight to minus two dBFS uh, for sustained noise, transients can clip, uh, but typically generally loud things don't clip on the camera. Whereas on the R5, I could actually get the signal to clip at whatever I set it to, you know, input wise versus the levels. So even in the like lowest setting, so when I had the level set to one, I could get the signal to clip with a clipped waveform at minus 10 dBFS on the camera's level meter. So no idea what's going on there. And that's really confusing to me. Now, the final thing I want to talk about on the camera are the low cut filters. This is something we can actually look at on the R5C. On the R5, the only low cut filter the camera has is the wind filter for the built-in mic. And since it's the built-in mic, you can't really test that easily without uh, an anechoic chamber and calibrated speakers and all that kind of stuff, which I don't have. But on the R5C, since the low cut filters are applied to the microphone input, we can generate and provide a clean signal through the microphone input that doesn't use a mic at all. And we can look at what happens there. So there are two low cut filters available, excluding off LC1 and LC2. LC1 is generally a, a low cut filter designed to reduce the AC or noise from AC powered things. So fans, motors, uh, lights that buzz, that kind of thing. It is designed to reduce those without impacting uh, vocal, the lower end of people's vocal register. The LC2 filter is designed to reduce wind noise. So it's gonna have a higher cutoff frequency, high enough that it can potentially impact people's lower register. 
Now, the way I tested this was to generate a 10 second long or 20 second long is one of the two uh, sweep from 20 kilohertz or 20 hertz to two kilohertz. Play that out through the DAC on my Zoom F6 into the camera and make sure that nothing was clipping in this entire process. So constant intensity, changing the frequency as time went on, and I made three recordings. So this is the spectral plot of the LC filter being turned off on the camera. And obviously it's not perfectly flat. There are some non-linearities. This is somewhat could be assumed or to be assumed uh, the DAC on the F6 may not be perfectly linear. The generation may not be perfectly linear. The um, length of the sweep may not have been long enough to ensure that the power was even at every possible frequency, especially at low frequencies. And the camera's input uh, convert amplifier and ADC may not be entirely linear. Uh, but what we're interested here most is what happens when we turn filters on. So when I turn the LC1 filter on, you can see the low end drops off significantly. So I made some calculations roughly based on these two charts to figure out that the cutoff frequency on the LC1 filter is around 125 hertz. That's about where it drops to minus 3 dB, which is what the definition of a cutoff frequency is. And roll off on this filter is about 6 dB per octave, which is pretty standard or consistent with audio filters like this. Uh, so this is pretty much what we would expect. These type of low uh, pass filters usually have a cutoff frequency of around 120 or so hertz. So we're right in line with what that should be. Switching the camera to LC2, we get this chart. And you can see it has a marked larger fall off on the low frequency end. Doing the same kind of analysis, the cutoff frequency shows up at about 225 hertz, which is fairly typical uh, based on my understanding of low cut wind filters. And the roll off here again is six decibels per octave. So that's the filters, pretty straightforward, but it's nice to have some information to go or to some numbers to go with what Canon says they are, given Canon provides no information about the filter uh, performance characteristics, cutoff frequency, none of that at all in the manual. So let me wrap this up with a couple of thoughts. The audio system on both the R5 and R5C is, well, interesting to say the least. The R5C is a seemingly enigmatic in this sense in that I can absolutely make the sound clip on the R5 and I, for any kind of signal I provide, and I can't do that with the R5C. I don't know if this is a design thing that the Cinema EOS people put in either because of the difficulty of setting levels on the camera, so it's there to protect you, or if this is something that's inherent to the other Cinema cameras because presumably people who are recording audio on them need to be more run and gun than if you were recording in a cinematic context where you would have two system audio and an actual audio recordist doing that all that work or what. Uh, I don't know. Um, it's weird though, if you ask me. That said, neither of these cameras seem to have the chops to get to, or to take advantage of 24-bit recording. Uh, so the R5C offers it, and I know people will say, but one of the advantages of 24-bit isn't just dynamic range, it's increased precision per decibel of the file, you know, increased precision in the file. And yes, that's true. Uh, but in either case, I'm not sure if it's really the right thing or if it's just there more for marketing, given the way the cameras seem to operate. That said, the R5 could get very close to hitting out or maxing out the dynamic range available in a 16-bit file. So that's 96 decibels is the max that you can have in a 16-bit file. And when I tested the R5, I could hit 90 to 92 decibels in uh, certain levels with the uh, hot signal and you know low levels and the attenuator on that camera. On the R5C, the best I got in any of the measurements that I did, as admittedly as flawed as they are, is about 78 dB. And even if you assume that my because of the, the level sh 
shifting or limiter that function that the camera had that that was, you know, it's 10 dB higher, that's only 88 dB. Uh, it's a far cry from the 144 dB that's available in a 24-bit file and, you know, really would probably be completely adequate in a 16-bit file at that. So, that is the audio performance tests that I did on the R5C. Not as awesome and conclusive as I was hoping, and I think they opened more questions than gave answers, uh, but unfortunately, not being an audio engineer, I'm at the limit of what I have a clue on how to actually measure with the way the camera works. So if you have ideas or you have more experience with this, leave a comment and let me know kind of what I did wrong or what I could do better or what you think would work better for the camera. If not, um, I hope you enjoyed this or at least got something useful or informative out of it. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button. If this kind of thing seems like it might not, or seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.